several of our forces in the face of continued Pakistan-sponsored terror, strengthening of counter-terror machinery and punitive approach is necessary. And that's what perhaps we are doing as a nation because the enemy seems to have also shifted the theater of action towards the Jammu region. Multiple terror attacks in Jammu and Kashmir in the recent past, especially in the region south of the Peer Panjal. There is little doubt that uh, China also uses Pakistan as a proxy military and nuclear power against us. This sedition will attempt to blow the lid off another such attempt by both these nations to bleed Bharat with a thousand cuts. If not, then what is the ulterior motive of what has been unearthed is something that we'll try and ask our guests. Now, here's what we've learned from our intelligence sources. Jammu has almost 50 foreign terrorists or FTs who are all from Pakistan. And the focus is slowly shifting away from the Kashmir region to the Jammu region. Jammu is the new battleground or the theatre of action because these proxies believe there is scope to expand and also cause further mayhem among the largely Hindu population there. They are trained young terrorists who are highly radicalised. Are these cadres who have been moved away from Afghanistan and now being you know, positioned in Bharat? We'll have to wait and watch. They are trained in such a way that they can survive without contact in the area, without the support of too many OGWs. They are using the dhoks on the outskirts of villages which are used largely by the uh, ever-moving nomadic population of the Bakarwals and the Gujars there or the shepherd community. They are capable of collecting information on their own instead of lying, uh, relying on OGWs. And to radicalize these men, there are also videos of ambush and attack that are spread on social media by the Lashkar to make this a psychological war also. So the psyops continue. But why is Jammu now becoming the hotspot for these terrorists is a question that one may want to ask. Is successful, Kashmir is successful uh, due to the flat terrain and in Punch Rajori, the terrain is very difficult because of many highs and lows and it's also spread out, which is why there hasn't been much provocation until now. These park back terrorists are entering from the Hiranagar sector and that side and there is a possibility of perhaps one or two tunnels, long tunnels that are facilitating their entry into Bharat's territory. Synergy uh, of response in terms of Kashmir is excellent. And this will take some time to replicate in the Jammu region and the terrorists think that they can exploit this. Pakistan army is of the belief that deployment in Jammu is lower than uh, Kashmir which affects their reaction time as well and they hope to be able to exploit that. When I say deployment, deployment of the military and also the paramilitary forces and also the entire security grid that's now been perfected in the Kashmir region that needs to be perfected in the Jammu region. But all such efforts have also met with an equal and befitting response from our forces forces and who are recalibrating very, very fast. But there is the other dynamic. Who and what is emboldening the Pakistanis recently? Is there a bigger entity or a person at play? And in this case, the fingers point towards China because of that meeting in Beijing, supply of fresh funds as a security, uh, you know, money deposit that's been given to protect the CPEC corridor. But is there a diversion here and a deliberate attempt by China to try and reduce, force Bharat into reducing the deployment along the LSE and force a redeployment by creating trouble in the Jammu region. So that's the, that's the overall game if you can see it. But something more sinister, ladies and gentlemen. The axis has uh, axis of evil, as uh, some experts are being calling it, is up to no good when it comes to fomenting trouble in this region. And it is not limited to just pushing terror and aggression on the border lines anymore. Both our neighbours seem to now be indulging in transport of illicit substances. Uh, just on Thursday, Bharat has seized a large consignment of a chemical that can be used to produce tear gas or other riot control agents. A Chinese vessel bound for Pakistan was seized at the Katupali port in Tamil Nadu. Top intelligence sources have told CNN News 18 that China and Pakistan's relationship has progressed far beyond just economic investment and energy projects. Pakistan has clear value for Beijing as a source for transporting illicit substances. China has recently boasted of its growing and updated nuclear weapons program, perhaps as a challenge to the West support of Taiwan, Philippines and among others. Beijing is seeing Pakistan as a nation that can be easily exploited and subverted and subverting sanctions and export-import controls. Beijing also believes that China has more scrutiny than Pakistan vis-a-vis -vis international bans and regulations. And intelligence sources believe that China needs Pakistan for the sake of plausible deniability. But is Pak soil being used for something further and more sinister? And what kind of chemicals and why is such chemical and such substance at high amounts being transported 
to Pakistan is a, is a question that needs to be answered. Ambassador Deepak Gora, former diplomat, is with us. Aina Tangan, senior fellow, uh, Taihe Institute, and also chairman of Asia Narratives, who joins us. Sushil Pandit, Kashmiri activist, is with us. And Kamar Chima, strategic and defense analyst, joining us from Pakistan. My namaste to everybody. Thank you very, very much. Ambassador Vora, let me first ask you, how would you see? There are two aspects that we are looking at. One, this entire renewed push or resurgence of this proxy war on Bharat's territory. The other is this entire China Park axis and what their machinations are. What do you read of this drug haul? Thank you very much, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Thank you. Always a pleasure. And of course, we have these wonderful uh, people on your show. I learned so much from them, as I do from you. And thank you very much for bringing up this issue, which uh, only you have done. You are the best. And I'm speaking of you personally. So thank you very, very much. I think millions of people who watch your show should be aware of this. So let me put it across to you very bluntly. Mm. All this nonsense about higher than the mountains, deeper than the ocean, sweeter than honey, this is a Pakistani construct, not Chinese. Now, what is happening is the inevitable, inexorable rise of India, militarily, politically, diplomatically, culturally, however you do it, has made a new mountain, a new Everest rise in China's efforts to dominate Asia. That mm -hmm. new mountain is called Bharat. Therefore, you circumvent that and go to, uh, Satan goes to his consort, the consort is called Pakistan, and then says, look, you don't have the money to give back to me for all that nonsense about the uh, Bilk and Rob, sorry, Belt and Road Initiative or the CPEC or whatever it was. Therefore, now you start doing what I'm telling you. And now we are going to indulge, sir, I call this medicinal warfare. Hmm. You disguise all this nonsense as uh, medical drugs, not the kind of drugs that they are meant to be, and use Pakistan to transport them, not forgetting that Pakistan has enormous experience of dealing with this kind of nonsense during the Soviet-Afghan war, even subsequently. We have been seizing a lot of boats heading out of that Ghadar port or whatever that port is called, uh, which are loaded with cocaine and heroin meant for other countries. Therefore, how I see this and the recent seizure here is now having uh, Pakistan having got its nose bloodied in trying a direct confrontation with us and China, which now practically owns Pakistan, treats it as a colony. I believe that it's in the interest of both to try and weaken anyone China perceives as its enemy, i.e. the West, India, Philippines, North Korea, South Korea, whatever. Don't forget that China has 19 neighbors and leave out Pakistan. Well, Pakistan is not really a neighbor. But leave out Pakistan, it has bad relations with all of them. So it has to adopt new forms of warfare to say, brother, I may not be a good friend, but I have enormous nuisance value, so don't mess with me, sir. Hmm. Now, according to the available, the available details, a Chinese firm, Chengdu Shichin Trading Company Limited, has shipped a consignment of orthochlorobenzylidine malononitrile. Malononitrile. Now, to Rohail Enterprises, a Rawalpandi-based defense supplier, the consignment weighs about 2,560 kilograms, stored in 103 drums of 25 kilograms each and loaded into a carrier vessel, Hyundai Shanghai, sailing under a Cyprus flag. On April 18, 2024, at the Shanghai port in China, the vessel on its voyage to Karachi reached the Katupali port in Tamil Nadu on the 8th of May, 2024. The customs authorities on routine checking detained the consignment as chemical figured under India's export control list of SCOMET as a controlled substance. Further investigation of the chemical revealed that this orthochlorobenzylidine malo, malononitrile, CS, was also listed, was also a listed substance under the Vassanar arrangement of which India is a signatory. Subsequently, the consignment was seized under the provisions of Customs Act 1962 and the Weapons of Mass Destruction and Delivery Systems Provision of Unlawful Activities Act 2005. CS Chemical finds potential usage in riot control agents and also as an incapacitating agent during war. Kamar Chima, why was this headed to Karachi? Can you repeat the question, please? I said, why was this headed to Karachi, this consignment? Well, I, I definitely don't know which consignment is going in which direction. I am not looking at the Pakistan's customs. But the problem here is that why are you worried? I, I, I can understand that the NATO gave a statement just yesterday that somehow China is helping Russia 
in whatever the Russians are doing. So you are also trying to put a pressure on China or oh, whatever Pakistan and indeed there is between Pakistan and India and Kashmir, this is China behind it. So I think that doesn't make a logic. Yes, I understand uh, that uh, the Indians have a problem with the uh, with the China-Pakistan relation. But remember, China and India already have a good uh, bilateral mm. trade and you have your own relations. But don't try to mingle or bring Chinese into it because uh, the world is pressurizing China. The world is coming at the Chinese backyard in Indo-Pacific. That doesn't mean uh, that give you uh, the position that China is asking Pakistan to pressurize India and Kashmir. I think uh, the Indians are really worried because uh, the military level talks... Uh, between China and India, they are not successful. Every time Prime Minister Modi had to shy away, for example, he didn't go at the mm. SCO. Uh, 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 he sent uh, Dr. Jashankar there. Uh, they are not. You are not having by you know the the direct uh, the 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 flights from Beijing to Delhi. Uh, you you are shying away from China. We can understand there are direct. Uh, cargo flights from China to uh, India, but there are no direct passenger flights. So I think uh, the Indians are unable to do what, they are unable to decide how to deal with China. So they are running from pillar to post. Sometimes you hide behind America, sometimes you hide behind Pakistan, sometimes you try to hide behind, uh, uh, you know, another Western uh, power, but the, there is no solution with the Indians how to deal with China. So I can understand the panic. The more the Americans pressurize China, the, the more leverage India gets to pressurize China. So I think uh, I understand at the moment the Prime Minister Modi and his leadership, this is one of the most pro-West government mm. in the Indian history. And the media is trying to replicate and tell the world, oh, yes, yes, we are just trying to be the proxy of the United States in the region See, because we are being you know, given a role of a big brother in the region. Kamar Chima, this you is what I love about brother you, in the region. This is, this is what I really enjoy yeah. about you. The more I allow you to speak, the more you tangle yourself and your arguments is, is far more convoluted than a jalebi here at, uh, at Chandni Chowk. No, no, it's not no, 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 I'll tell you why. And I'll tell you why. You had so much to say about India and you have no clue what Pakistan is doing. Thankfully, sir, Hawa Hawaii is a Bollywood song, but what you are indulging in, but what I am not indulging in. This is fact-based, sir. This is what happened. This consignment left Shanghai. Was it true? Took to Karachi. It is 2,560 kilograms of dual-use substance. And, sir, let me further give you more information to update you, and then you can decide what more spiel you would want to add uh, or how much more you would want to desperately try to shift the goalpost. You are making this statement a day after Eric Garcetti had a problem with Prime Minister Narendra Modi hugging Vladimir Putin. And then you are saying that we are trying to tally to the back. Yehi mein kehra no, sir. When I allow you to speak, you do your damage yourself. The, the, I don't need Americans to do anything for you. you. That's what, that's what I love about you, sir. That's the what Americans I love. But I mean, nah, now, 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 back to, now back to facts. Interestingly, this is not the first occasion when China has supplied dual-use items and controlled substances to Pakistan in total violation of international covenants and regulations. China, on previous occasions, has also found to be clandestinely assisting Pakistan bolstering its WMD or weapons of mass destruction capability. Earlier this year, China yes, shipped sir, a consign... China, China, China shipped... Sir, WMDs. hear me out. China shipped a consignment we of CNC machinery onto a carrier vessel, carrier vessel CMA CGM Attila, which was seized at the Navasheva port in January 2024. Although Cosmos Engineering was mentioned as the consignee for the aforesaid CNC consignment, reports claimed that Desto was the actual end user. The confiscation of CNC machines of ultra-high precision class capable of producing sophisticated and precision components had potential the usage in defense aerospace and nuclear reading. and nuclear the fields, thereby raising proliferation concerns. So between January again, between January to May, two instances, two instances, two instances, sir. Sir, sir, Samajdar Bacha, Samajdar Bacha or Shaitan Bacha me fark hota hai. Shaitan Bacha ke hath me danda dekho ge to maabab ghavra jate hai. Samajdar Bacha ke hath me bolte hai, Bacha saaf karega. To yaha Shaitan Bacha kawan hai, Samajdar kawan hai, sabko pata. Everybody understands that. Sushil Pandit, Sushil Pandit, would you buy into Mr. Kamar Chima's logic, if you could find one? Sir, logic and Kamar Chima are contraindicated. Pakistan is has been a vassal state on hire. It's an assassin on hire for a long time. West used it in the Cold War against Warsaw Pact. And today China is using it to finger everyone around the world, including the West, India, wherever. 
And this is the coming together of rogue countries who do not believe in international norms, regulations, treaties, and, and therefore everything falls in place. It's a very easy jigsaw puzzle. China has used counterfeit currency. China has used illicit drugs. China has used gun running. China has used trafficking in terrorists to uh, undermine India consistently in the past few decades. China has caused a genocide of Hindus in Kashmir Valley in order to achieve its jihadi aims. Ch uh, so sorry, Pakistan. Pakistan is, is a willing assassin on hire for China, and therefore it's doing its bidding, has been doing so for a long, long time, and offered its territory, has offered its economy a hostage to Chinese designs. And therefore, the two are today linked inextricably. Uh, Pakistan has no other option but to count out to China because it owes a lot of money to China. It owes its nuclear program to China. It owes its missile program to China. It owes its entire economic float to China. So how, how else do you explain this entire situation? Mr. Kamachima has a difficult job at hand, but he will brazen it out. Uh, as he always does in each and every particular situation, I have nothing to offer because he is in complete denial. He won't accept. You, you can't have a logical debate or an argument with someone who is in complete denial of what they are doing. A careful uh, analysis of periodic seizures, Mr. Tangan, indicates that this is just a meager part of a larger proliferation network that exists between Pakistan and China. This is what research reports come out and say. Noteworthy to mention that in April 2024, the U.S. Bureau of Industry and Security, BIS, sanctioned three companies, Chinese companies, Tianjin <coughs> Creative Source, International Trade Company Limited, Grand Pact Company Limited, and Jian Longde Technology Development Company for their involvement in supplying key components to Pakistan's ballistic missile program. What is happening, Mr. Tangan? Well, you, you have a situation between uh, China, Russia, India, Pakistan, and the United States where you have shifting alliances depending on uh, the moment. Uh, most, you know, obviously, Pakistan and India and the other part of that. Uh, you know, for I've, I've listened carefully or tried to to the arguments that have been put forward uh, by the other uh, commentators. I, I still am a little fuzzy on exactly why destabilizing India would be good for China. Um, actually, China um, has said many times that they wish uh, India to do well, to continue to grow. Uh, that would be part of creating an Asian century versus uh, co colonial instigated conflict and division, which India knows much about. Uh, right now, you've, you've just come off a situation where NATO is on one side, the SEO is on the other. And it seems, you know, that the world is dividing. NATO insists that it's a defensive alliance, uh, but it wants to take on um, Asia. Uh, the SCO uh, says, look, we're only about domestic stability. Uh, there's no, uh, you know, going after other countries or anything like that. Both India and Pakistan, uh, you know, <laughs> Russia, China, they're all parts of that organization. The hope was uh, bringing these nations together would create a place uh, to create peace. Uh, there are long-standing cultural, political issues between uh, these countries, India and Pakistan. Uh, hopefully that can be resolved. But this idea that somehow it would be in China's interest to have confusion uh, in uh, India is not the way that they see it here in, in Beijing. But tell me, why, is, why are these supplies then happening? Why, is the, you, well, you, why are these yeah. supplies of dual-use components uh, okay. being sent to a nation that uh, both China, the world is going to be wary of, and you know that they can get trigger happy, and it's in nobody's interest to supply them with this kind of technology and these kind of chemicals. Well, I, I, I think there's uh, this kind of popular misconception that if somebody is Chinese, that they're acting on behalf of the Chinese nation. I don't assume that somebody in India, if they do something, is acting on behalf of the Indian nation or government. Mm. So I think that's uh, a different issue. You have, uh, you know, just depending on perspective. In Washington, they take a very dim view of mm. uh, India's oil trade with Russia. 
uh, which is going mostly to Europe. Um, you know, I'm not saying that it's right or wrong. I just I don't understand exactly why there's this kind of vilification of all of China, 1.4 million people, because the acts of a few companies who are being motivated not by politics but by greed. And you know, there was a chap from India who was convicted recently in the United States. Is that being held against India, saying Indians are all frauds and things like that? Of course not. That's silly. You have to differentiate the acts of individuals from those of the governments. But these companies don't seem to be on the face of it, private companies, uh, and they cannot be exporting such material, which is under the proliferations list and uh, uh, of banned substances as far as international signatories. And the end port is Karachi, sir. It's not that Karachi was going to be a medium view. And it's not one. It's a series of such shipments that have happened, be it for ballistic missile use or even the latest shipment of CS, which can be used for any of the uh, biological or chemical warfare against its own people or anywhere else. Ambassador Deepak Kora, how, how would you read this? Do you buy this explanation that it necessarily not be, have to be backed by the Chinese state? The port of origin is Shanghai. There are not one but multiple companies that have been listed by the BIS in the US. I've read that out. And this latest company and this latest shipment that's been intercepted in Chennai. With utmost respect, may I just say, even the devil can quote scripture for his purpose. That's a saying that is totally true about our colleagues from China. No, sir. China has a unifocal agenda, which is to dominate the world, and India stands like a barrier. People tell me that China doesn't have the time to think about India. Not true at all. It spends a lot of its time trying to create trouble for us. We matter to them more than you would believe. As far as companies are concerned, I've heard about the private sector in China. Yeah, sell me another one, sir. Um, I, I love snake oil. Every company there is controlled by the Communist Party of China. Tibet is whatever you mm. might call it, an autonomous region, great autonomy, they decide things themselves. No, sir, nomenclature doesn't matter. It's actions that speak louder than words. Sushil Panditji, the FTs yes. in the Jammu region, this being the latest theater of action? Yes, I would. Uh, first, let me respond to Mr. Tanjan. He's created a false equivalence about India importing Chinese, uh, Russian oil and sending it to yeah, Europe. Crude oil is not We are not creating, how? We are not creating alibis. Indian states stood up and owned up and justified this. We are not hiding behind uh, different kinds of pretexts or excuses to shirk responsibility. This is our legitimate right and we are doing so. Unlike what China is saying that there are some private companies, unknown host companies trying to profit. No, sir, that's not, that's not the right equivalence. As far as Jammu is concerned, hmm. today there is a heightened terror activity in Jammu. We have a Hindu dominated region being now there's an attempt to cleanse uh, and, and upset the demography, demographic balance of that region after doing the same in the valley. Now, this is a very clear machination from across the border. They have been targeting Hindus because Hindus steadfastly stand by Indian nationalism. They are not easy to, to, to subvert, to, to draw into subversion, and therefore, uh, create a demographic situation which would then benefit uh, Pakistan for waging jihad against India. This is what they did in Kashmir. This is now what they attempt to do in Jammu. And China, knowing India's opposition to uh, the CPEC because they are passing through Indian territory of Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, would like to see this happen. India's uh, standing mm. in the state of Jammu and Kashmir further weakens so that our opposition to Chinese mm. uh, transgression over our, our territory uh, gets weakened. So mm. there is a very clear collusion of interest between China and Pakistan. Mm. And the way uh, PLA is right now sitting in Indian territory controlled by Pakistan, mm. uh, in the Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, is, is a further proof of this collusion. Sir, if the Pakistanis want to come, I've got to wind up, but if the Pakistanis really want shelter and asylum in Bharat, they should come the legal way. Why come here as illegals and come here as pariahs? Pakistan won't own them, we won't, them, we won't allow them to live, and then they will occupy space beneath our own hallowed grounds, like they have done in Dras and in Kargil, Kamarchima. Unfortunate. Uh, Ambassador Deepak Wara, you want to say something, sir? I have to wind up 30 seconds. Say, sir, that, yeah, yes, sir. 30, 15 seconds. What we have done arresting and seizing all this nonsense which was uh, transiting through us, it's part of our 
commitment to the Watanar Agreement. You know all about it. Yes. We are members. Yeah. Uh, we became members seven, eight years ago. I was there when we signed the thing. We also chaired the thing uh, last year, I believe. So we are keeping in, uh, we, we are in conformity with our international commitments. That's what we are doing. I think uh, we'll, we'll dwell uh, on Jammu and Kashmir and also perhaps are we at, uh, are we, you know, making a big mistake thinking that our neighbor will reform uh, and perform and transform. Uh, you, uh, while realizing at the back of our heads that they will never conform. So uh, I have to wind up on that note. Thank you very, very much. Thank you to all our guests. Thank you very much. We're going to take a very, very short break. When we come back, ladies and gentlemen, it's the big push for the Uniform Civil Code. A big push that's come from the highest court of this country for gender and religious parity. And just around the time when the UCC draft is being made public,